really special frag. Some of them are actually turning yellow. Aptasia in a jar. Placement for the other corals. Hey, what's up, Reefers? Today's gonna be an awesome video. As you know, I've been looking for this particular soft coral for a very, very long time. Ever since Mr. Jake Adam, reef builder himself, did a special on the weeping willows, I've been on the hunt for one for a very long time. Now, it just so happened that Mr. Bahama Lama, Remy, happened to have a really nice colony of weeping willows. We've been in the talk for almost a year in terms of swapping some corals. So a few months ago, I sent over some Gorgonians and just so happened that my reef sensei is on an RV trip and happened to be passing by the state that Bahama Lamas is in. And thanks to Jim and Remy, in my hand is finally a really special frag of weeping willow. In fact, I'm not even sure if we can call it a frag because this is a natural born baby. It's not actually a cutting. Besides the much anticipated whipping willow, Rami also sent me these two corals as well. This is a reverse bleeding apple that he fragged. Look at how well it's healed and it, man, it's bright. This is bright, it's not even in the tank yet. And over here we have a zoar that I'm not familiar with. It's called the ultimate agave. A goth. Uh, but I know Rami is uh, big in zoa, so whatever he sent, I'm sure it's Good stuff. Thank you so much, Remy. I promise I'll take great care of your babies. So you may have noticed there are two more containers as well. These are from my Reef Sensei Gym. First up, we got a chalice that looks really awesome. Looks like a hot pink with some kind of yellow eye. I'm terrible with name. I forgot what it's called already, but it looks beautiful and fully encrusted. I can't wait to add this to the rock work. Next up, we got a classic SPS, and that is a Lansing Montepora cap. Notice the really nice deep green as well as the deep purple rim. Also the really thick texture. This is gonna be an awesome SPS to add to the 135 gallon tank. And the most important thing is that it's money cap, so it should be easier to keep. All right guys, I'm floating all the frag right now. And as you can see, the tank is once again, cloudy. The thing is that the tank is cloudy at the same schedule as the mangrove tank upstairs. It's the strangest thing. Every two weeks without fail, it'll always go through this cycle of cloudiness. And I bet you in two days, it's gonna be crystal clear again. It's the strangest thing. The prolifia macroalgae in the mangrove tank did go sexual a lot. The leaves actually turn transparent. So I feel like it could contribute to the cloudiness. However, it does not make sense that the this tank gets cloudy on the same schedule. I do have cleaners that come over to the house every three weeks to clean the house. Uh, I've asked them not to use any aerosol spray uh, near the tank but I wonder when they're cleaning like the uh, sliding door and stuff like that whether they're using Windex and whatnot and it just kind of somehow got in the tank as well just to make sure I'll probably double check with them one more time and potentially maybe just even like seal up the tank when uh, we have folks over doing some cleaning work unsolved mystery but hopefully that's it I wish that's it so this way at least I know uh, what is causing it and how we can prevent it the next day hey what's up reefers this week, we're meeting up with another fellow reefer to do a little swapping. First off, we got a sprouted mangrove shoot. I'm covering the root to protect it, make sure it does not get damaged in transport because that's one of the most important things. The other thing it's gonna try is actually this, the Magano wine for zapping Aptasias. And Aptasia is actually what brings me here today because I'm trying to find Aptasias for my uh, Bergia nudibranch. And he happens to have a rock with some Aptasias that can feed the nudibranchs. Also, he has a really interesting macroalgae that he's gonna hook me up with that we're gonna try. All right, well, let's go meet up with Adam and uh, I'll check back with you guys later. All right guys, while Emily's checking out an antique store at Glen Burnie, let's take a look and see what we got today. All right, first off, this is what I'm super excited about today. This is a really nice collection of macroalgae from Adam. Uh, the interesting thing about these guys is that some of them are actually turning yellow, look at these. So he mentioned that in higher light under the system, some of them actually turn yellow and that's what I'm super excited about today. So we'll try these out and he was kind enough to mount some of them on frag plug for me. So I can easily anchor them into the sand to try some and the other ones I can just kind of let flow in the refugium or whatnot and we'll see how it turns out. Now this other one's crazy. Uh, the other reason I met up with Adam is because he has aptasias. It's kind of weird I'm actually adding aptasia into my tank but as you know I added some Bergia nudibranchs, actually six of them and they have tripled inside within two and a half weeks and they are turning white meaning that they are running out of food so i am starting to look for aptasias locally and adam was kind enough to provide a piece of rock with all these little aptasias for them to munch on so seeing how quickly those new brands goes through aptasias i actually went to house of tropicals and bought some aptasias crazy right five bucks i got a big bunch of them I'm, i cannot believe today i'm actually buying aptasias to add to my tank so i know we in the past we have made jokes about new reefer is going to a fish store and wanting to buy those really cheap brown aptasias. Well guys, today I am one of them. I bought some brown aptasias. Two days later. All right guys, a little bad news bear. It has been about two and a half, three days and the aptasia numbers did not change. You notice that tank is also really cloudy similar to the 135, which is actually clearing up now. Uh, so they are on the same schedule really strangely. Because like in the two and a half days, the aptasia numbers did not change. I feel like perhaps the Bergia nudibranch 
ranks may have finished all adaptation in the tank and already starved. Um, sorry, fellas, but they have accomplished their missions 100%. At the risk of these Aptasia actually spreading in this tank, which is something that I'm trying to avoid because I just clear them out, I think I'm probably gonna like pull them out into a separate little tank, a little tub for now. The next morning. Like I mentioned, the mangrove tank also has a bacteria bloom, and unfortunately it has not cleared up as easily as the 135. And I feel like the bacteria bloom actually triggered something else. Some of the macroalgae actually turned pale and went sexual. There's definitely an imbalance in the tank at the moment, whether it's triggered by the bacteria bloom or whether the bacteria bloom kind of added to it. I'm not sure, but things are not happy. Uh, coral is okay, macroalgae, uh, I think like half of it died back due to going sexual, they all turned transparent. But the other half seems to be okay. Uh, they retain and I'm sure they'll grow back really quickly. Macroalgae tend to bounce back really quickly. I sometimes do see like these snotty uh, strings like that and usually that is bacteria, although once in a while it could also mean that it is simply the mucus from the leather shredding. By the way, I did a water change yesterday and it did not really seem to make too big of a difference except I don't see as much of the snot strings anymore. And later on today, I'm just gonna slap the UV sterilizer on here and the water is probably gonna clear up in about 24 hours. The other thing you'll notice is different is actually the Aptasia's rock. I actually pulled them and they're all right here because I have them in this tank for about three days and the number did not go down. So I'm guessing maybe I was a little bit late in terms of adding the Aptasia's for the Bergia new brand. They went without Aptasia's for maybe two or three days because I still see one or two Aptasia's, right? And I saw those like nudibranchs becoming this big, like wandering around the tank. And that's when I noticed, okay, I need to get some Aptasia's and that's why I uh, went out locally. And that only took about three or four days. And just within the span of like three or four days uh, going on without Aptasia's, I feel like they may have starved. So this morning, instead of risking reinfecting the tank with Aptasia's, I make the executive decision to just put two rocks, keep it here, I'll give the tank maybe like two or three more days and I'll monitor at night. If I still do not spot them, maybe I'll try one of those little reef draw of just Aptasia's. That seems pretty popular as a scientific experiment these days. A lot of kids actually keep Aptasia in a jar without like airstone and stuff like that. No, maybe we'll give that a go because we do have Aptasia's here. Or maybe I'll try to get maybe two or three more of the these um, Bergia nudibranchs and try my hand at keeping a colony in the mangrove tank one more time. I just did not realize that the nudibranchs gonna disappear so quickly without a food source. Uh, I still see like one or two tiny aptasias in here. They're totally manageable, I can easily scrape them out, but I'm just, again, really surprised by how quickly the nudibranchs went away uh, without a food source. Meanwhile. All right, reefers, as I mentioned before, the tank has cleared up. It has been about four days at this point. And let's take a look and see how the corals are doing. So on the left side, we got the lang Sang Mondi cap. Can't really see the purple rim from here, but it's looking beautiful. I'm trying to find a good spot to mount the Mondi cap. I want to be a little bit more mindful this time because in the past, on the 45 gallon tank, I mounted the Mondi cap a little bit too high. It ended up growing really, really well, but as a result, it started shading all the corals behind it. So I'm thinking to mount it low, either at this corner or maybe like in the back corner up there. Next up, we got this really nice pink chalice from Jim. It got some nice neon green or yellow eyes. I'm thinking maybe added to this piece of rock the pink boobies used to be over there yes that's actually called the pink boobies i move it to this main structure right here so it's a little bit more up front and center so i have this little hole right here or on that side so i feel like either places may be nice for that really hot pink chalice sliding over here we got the long sought after whipping willows from remy uh, i am kind of torn because i want to either keep this in the 135 gallon tank somewhere in the high flow area or uh, it will look, look really nice in the mangrove tank as well. Uh, ultimately, I think I may keep it in the mangrove tank first so I can kind of look at it up close and personal. Keep it for a couple months, once it get a little bit larger, and then I'll move it to this tank, probably over there with the Gorgonian so that it gets all the nice flow to show off that nice, long, wavy tentacles. Next up, we got another really memorable piece, and that is the reverse. Uh, sour apple that Remy fragged up. It has healed completely and grown into a nice little quarter size and it looks beautiful. The color is really striking. I can't wait for it to get a little bit larger and I am now kind of like brainstorming in a nice spot to put it as well. We definitely want to keep them a little bit closer up because of the size as well as the intense color. 
And finally is a Zoa that I am not familiar with at all. In fact, it could be a Pally, I'm not 100% sure. But according to Remy, it is called the Ultimus Agarth. I understand that the Agarth Zoas have many different morphs and this is one of them. I have not seen this morph before and it looks beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. On top of that, not just one polyp, there's actually a baby on the other side as well. I'm a big fan of Zoas or Pallies with really nice intricate details, kind of like these. So this is like right down my alley. This would be an awesome addition to the Zoa Garden. Uh, right now, I'm kind I'm planning out the Zoa Garden because I feel like uh, I've made the mistake of putting too many Zoas with similar cards next, next to each other. For example, we got these uh, Sour Apple right here, King Midas right there, Rasta. They're all kind of similar. I like to add some red or orange Zoas among the mix so that we get a nice little contrast among the Zoa Garden. So that's another thing I'm looking into, introducing different colored Zoas. While we're looking at corals, here's a quick peek at the corals that TSA sent in the last video and see how they're doing. Right now they're still on the sand bed, acclimating to the light as well as the parameters of the tank. So I'm trying not to stress too much. I've just been leaving them here for about a week and a half at this time. And they're all looking great. They're slowly adapting and I feel like maybe uh, in a couple days I'm going to start planting them on certain pieces of rock. So I'm trying to figure out all the coral placement at least for midterm. So I got some thinking to do to complicate the matter a little bit more. I've started growing out the Euphilia garden like I mentioned in the last video as well. So this kind of placement is already set. I'm really happy with how this looks. So most likely this entire space will be taken up by different types of euphilia. That part is obviously Zoa Gardens and that top edge is Gorgonians for now and it's made transition into all SPS down the road. So I got the rest of the tank to play with in terms of um, placement for the other corals. And the other thing I really want to look into is actually planting corals on the uh, feeding tube of the Avas plank auto feeder as well as the return pumps. And I'm trying to brainstorm what would be some cool corals to grow on there, possibly like green star polyp or something like that. All right guys, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. All right guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and in the comment below. Let me know why you think the tank keeps getting cloudy. This is really blowing my mind. And also, if you think I should get more Gurgia nudibranchs to try to start a colony or kind of just let them go because they're a little bit sensitive. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the week. I'll see you guys next time at 12 for the game shop. Wow.